I'm Lori Husengay. I work at McKinley Elementary in Owatonna, Minnesota, and we are working on an arts integration project here, trying to extend our students' learning, being able to sort and identify different stages of the life cycle of a plant. We have been doing a project on plants, and we made claymation movies um, to go with it. We were sh showing um, how a plant goes from a seed to adult, and we have been working a lot on it. This is our first year at McKinley Elementary as a STEM school. We wanted to make sure that something with STEM, science, technology, engineering, or math was a part of what we did with our project. We started to look at the science standards in second grade and how we could make art work with what we were doing. The big idea we started with was change. What kinds of things change? What kind of things in the second grade curriculum can show change? The students first began in the classroom learning about the life cycle of plants. We used our STEM journal and it's a composition journal that we use and they would do some research on the computer or we would do some reading and they would keep their thoughts in their journal. We also um, are a classroom that brings in a lot of visuals and in there we brought in plants that the kids could look at. The four stages of the life cycle that the students studied were the seed, the sprout, the seedling, and then the mature plant. And then they took that into the art room where they drew technical pictures of those stages. After they did the technical drawings, they took a stage of a particular plant, whether it was a potato or a tomato and so on. And each child took clay and produced their stage. And from there, they built their claymation video. I introduced the kids to a bunch of different kind of animations, flip books, claymation, animation on the computer, Claymation was something that I was interested in doing. I had done it with younger kids before and I knew it was would be something they would be engaged and interested in. We have iPads at McKinley and we knew the kids knew how to use iPads, but introducing a new app using stop motion was something the kids had never been introduced to before. We started with making a Skittle video, which I thought would be something enticing for the students. So they got a Skittle and they had to draw a line on a piece of paper and their Skittle had to move across the paper so they could practice using the stop motion app on the iPad. And then of course we had a Skittle eating party at the end when we were done. The next day they were very ready to take their clay and use the same process they did with the Skittles to show how their plant grew. Do you think today more pictures is better or less pictures? More. 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 So the tinier movements you have, the better your movie's gonna look. That's a true. really great video, you probably would have 100 pictures. A lot of them really got into it. They had their backgrounds going with the clouds floating across the page, the rain coming down. I think one group even had their plant dying and turning into a seed and growing again. Another group ended up having uh, a little person walk onto the page and <laughs> ate the fruit that the plant grew. And so it was really fun to see how once the students had that claymation process down, because we had practiced it, that they were able to kind of take it another step and go above and beyond our expectations and add all those extra little pieces to their video. What do you think? I like it. I love it. After they had finished their claymation, they came back to the classroom where we created a timeline of the plant life cycle and a human life cycle and show the correlation between the two so that they could make connections. Then they wrote their story or their narrative that would tell the story that would go with the claymation video. There once was a seed. It was planted at home in the garden. When I was planted in the soil, it was hot and dark. Then I fell asleep when I was sleeping. It started to rain. The rain was so cold it woke me up. I need to hear what you know about plants, where they're planted, how they're planted, what they need, why they need it, and you're doing it in the narrative form, the storytelling form. The kids are excited about the things that they've created and they want to share them with others. I have a student who is a, he fights the writing 
and he's really a, a non-writer is what I term because he prefers not to write. And the narrative allows them to express themselves in a way that is very easy in my eyes, and it must have been in his too because for the first time he wrote almost a whole story without stopping, and he was excited about what he wrote, and that excited me and showed me that I need to find other avenues for our children to express themselves than always in the usual writing manner. And it was very exciting for me to watch him be so proud of himself. It chokes me up. I've enjoyed seeing the students be fully engaged in what they're doing. It's really fun to see kids who love what they're learning and are excited to tell you about what they've learned. I have learned to go back and look at my lesson planning to make sure that I have ways to prove that my students have indeed learned the core understanding of the lessons that I've taught. It has also brought me into thinking about how STEM is getting our kids to find the way that they learn the best and to be able to express themselves and to be open-minded thinkers. Getting kids to think and be creative. You know, they can use their creativity here in art class and everybody kind of knows that. They can do that in music class, but can they do that in math or can they do that in the science classroom? Right now we're seeing, yeah, they can. Every kid that I've seen and talked to them about it, they love what they're doing. I would love to do this project again and hopefully we can do it with all of our second graders next year. I'm looking forward to working with Lori again and planning with Lori again and expanding this project with other teachers in our school. Early in the project when Amanda and I were co-teaching, we worked very well because I taught the science piece where she would support it with the art piece and it just seemed to flow because the two were built together. Amanda was able to feed off of what I would start and I was able to do the same for her. And in with that, I really think the lesson was much stronger for our students.